United States, about half of the people live in cities and their suburbs. Between these cities has grown a network of transportation arteries to carry men and goods in a steady flow of commerce. Largest of these cities is New York. Here we find a good example of how such transportation arteries also develop within the city itself. This is Manhattan, business center of New York City and heart of the city's life. Millions pour into the area every day to work and shop, to buy and sell, to manufacture clothes, to run banks and brokerage firms, to handle imports and wholesale goods, to load and unload ships. But where do all these people come from and how do they get here? Some of the people who work in Manhattan live in apartment houses and other sections of the city. Others in single family houses out in the suburbs. In the mornings, Manhattan acts like a heart and draws in the workers from their homes in the surrounding areas. The streets become filled with crowds of workers and shoppers. Then in the evening, the workers stream home again. And the business section becomes a ghost city. Day after day, year after year, this constant cycle goes on. The rhythm and pulse of the city. When work is over, New Yorkers, like people everywhere, seek places of recreation. Sometimes they go to Coney Island, or more distant beaches, or Broadway, or just relax at a ball game. And so we see that the main job of transportation in the city is to carry people between three points where they live, where they work, and where they play. In New York City, people have a choice of several arteries of transportation. Certainly the most important means within the city is the subway. Almost any section of the city is within easy walking distance of a subway station. And by subway, one can travel to most points in the city, quicker and cheaper than by any other way. The subway schedules are arranged to meet the changing flow of traffic. In the early morning, there is heavy subway travel, followed by a slackening. In the late afternoon, there is a second rush, returning workers to their homes. At night, the load grows lighter and lighter. Because the subways serve only the city, suburban trains take their place in providing transportation to and from outlying communities. Since these trains serve a larger area with less people, the fare costs more and there are fewer trains. But once aboard, the commuter can enjoy a leisurely, comfortable trip. About two miles from the station, the train goes underground. From the station, the commuters continue on their way by buses, taxis, or on foot. Like the subways, in the mornings, the suburban trains carry heavy loads of workers to the city. This is followed by a slackening. In the late afternoon, there is a second surge as workers leave the city and return to their suburban homes. At night, there is less travel. Many commuters who come from New Jersey to New York must leave their trains in New Jersey and continue their trip by ferry boat. Although the ferry is slow, its passengers can get a breath of sea air before they plunge into the bustling city. In New York, 
the bus lines form another important artery. Their routes weave a tightly laced pattern over the face of lower Manhattan. And one can find a convenient bus line almost anywhere in the city. Buses are slower than the subway, but they offer the pleasure of being able to see store windows and the people of the city as they work and play. Suburban buses serve the outlying communities. When these reach the city, they usually transfer their passengers to the subway, which is faster. But of all the arteries of New York, perhaps the automobile routes have created the most problems. To provide easy travel in New York, many natural obstacles had to be overcome. For one thing, bridges had to be built to Manhattan, since it is an island surrounded by broad rivers. With the development of steel cables, modern suspension bridges became possible, and during the last century, one bridge after another has been built across the rivers. To supplement the bridges over the rivers, tunnels have been built beneath them. Together, the bridges and the tunnels make possible a steady stream of traffic in and out of Manhattan. Every large city has a problem of unusually heavy traffic during rush hours. As a solution, many streets are one way. Others have restricted parking zones and parking buildings keep cars off the streets. To supplement the existing routes, big express highways have been built to carry cars at high speeds directly to and from the heart of the city. The intersections of these express highways are designed so that cars may enter and leave without disturbing the flow of traffic. To serve the people in the suburbs, a network of parkways has been built. These allow cars to go swiftly from the far suburbs to the very heart of the city without interference of cross traffic. And so, by day and night, year after year, these arteries of New York throb steadily, their pulse timed to the life of the city. But it is no accident that they operate so smoothly or that new ones come into being just when and where they are needed. Providing transportation for New York's millions is the job of many kinds of experts. This group of research workers analyzes population trends to determine when and where new arteries are needed. Over a period of time, the people of the city move from old sections to new ones. As the population shifts to other sections, transportation must move with them and new arteries must be built. With the development of new sources of power and faster transportation, there will be new problems to solve. But New York, like all progressive cities, is studying and planning today to provide the arteries for tomorrow, through which flow the lifeblood of the city.